beautiful. Yes, and now uh, this is the moment uh, that we've been waiting for. And Stacy, just as you start, uh, we are very excited to have this. And uh, uh, the other thing is, uh, you can go up to around, I know, up to around eight. I know we will have a lot of questions, so we can give that 10, 15 minutes for questions. And then we close. Otherwise, welcome, and we are glad to have you. Karibu. Asante, Asante Sana, Paul. Um, and thank you very much, as all of them, for the warm introduction. I'm very happy for us to be here together to have a Wealth Building Monday, whereby we'll talk about the stock market, investing in it, and a guide, a very simple but yet uh, precise way to be able to invest for yourself as an individual. And then we can then move to the level where you look for this in Jimu. Yes, um, so I'd like to begin by saying I'm Stacey Njimu, I'm the Portfolio Manager at Amana Capital, and I'm your person when you want to look for money, man, money management and wealth management advice. We'll start with a quote that says, an investment isn't just a handful of digits that we look on our phones, we look on our screens, but it's hard and cash that is on the line, and if you manage it well, it's a ticket to financial independence and your retirement. But if you get to manage it poorly, then it becomes a black hole that continues to swallow our livelihood. So as we start, let's just know that uh, the stakes are high. The stakes are very, very high as we get to learn more about finance. Um, just maybe before I start, and also just to repeat what Paul said, if you have any questions, just put them on the chat as we go along, or raise your hand. Um, I'm very open to picking them just to make it as interactive as possible. Yes, so this is just a disclaimer that this is not particularly financial advice, but it is just a presentation to give you more knowledge to be able to empower you to make your own decisions. Great. Now, as we start uh, money, 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 the agenda for today shall be understanding the type of investment classes that are present in the NSC, which is the Nairobi Stock Exchange. Uh, we shall also, which recently converted to Securities Exchange, uh, we also have number two, which should be understanding how companies generate and use cash. Number three will be ways we tell a company is a great investment. And number four will be shopping for long-term priced investments. Now, as we get onto the presentation and start with the first agenda, which was understanding the types of investment classes, um, I believe all of us would have wanted to wake up this morning and get handed this briefcase uh, and, and just left the country very swiftly with our beautifully new dollars. And by now that we are all here and we're trying to empower ourselves with knowledge, so as to give ourselves a suitcase. Huh? Yeah. Um, so we have the three asset classes. Number one is currency. Number two is unproductive assets. And number three is productive assets. So starting with the first one, which is currency-based, this is whereby we have uh, the bonds. The bonds is the one that you always hear. The government of Kenya is looking for some type of money and they probably say they want 80 million from Kenyans. And what Kenyans then come and do is uh, through the Central Bank of Kenya, raise these particular finances to be able to finance the bank. And remember that bonds is usually a sort of repayment with a denomination where you get to receive your investment amount. So let's say you invested 50,000 Kenya shillings, and that is what you will be receiving, plus the interest over the period of time that you invested. Mostly um, it's five to 10 years, but recently we've been seeing shorter ones come into place. They're also 15 year, 20 year. Now we have a 6.51, that was the recent uh, concluded bond that was issued. And one beautiful thing about this one is uh, if you participate in the infrastructure bond, uh, you don't get to pay tax on it. And everyone knows uh, we want to give less and earn more. The second one is the unproductive assets. So this is, uh, for example, commodities, wheat, tea, coffee. Imagine the farmer who is in Kericho who is growing their tea. Um, for them, they just think of it as a secondary income or an income from selling the coffee beans, the tea at a higher price, not necessarily looking to have more income or dividends from the tea or the coffee that they are growing. And the third one is productive assets, whereby we have uh, the shares 
are the best type of investments in terms of building roads, since you have two sorts of asset classes that you get or returns per se. So that is dividends that comes in yearly uh, or also buy annually. And similarly, at the end of the period, if you want to sell it, you then also make an interest of the gain um, that you realize at that particular point in time. Um, Paul, you could also feel free if there are any questions on the chat, you can just prompt me as I go along. Okay, I'll be moving to the next slide, which we then have a lot is... of questions at the end. All oh, right, like, thank you, you for might clarifying. Not finish. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, so then this slide is a black box. And I want us to imagine that this black box is Power Monday. Power Monday is an incorporated company that we are thinking we want to invest in. And Power Monday has inputs and outputs. Uh, we just need to figure out the different inputs and outputs. So the input is the revenue that comes into Power Monday, um, the sort of income that comes into Power Monday, and the output is the expenses that have to leave Power Monday um, at any given point in time. And when we are analyzing a company, we need to be very keen to figure out what are the inputs that this company has that being revenue and what are the outputs that being expenses. And in that black box is what we are left with and that is the profit. So to be able to figure out how we are able to invest in good companies, we are very keen on finding these three paramount things. And number one, dividends. Number two, share buybacks. And number three would be the retained earnings that we get. So just to get into a bit of detail uh, for each of them. Payments that are usually made to the shareholders is usually in form of dividends, uh, as we've mentioned, that it is usually paid out once a year, but sometimes can be done twice a year. And there are usually also bonuses that are given to the shareholders. We want to be encouraged to continue investing and saving our money. So it is very important for us to look for shares that gives, give us some sort of return, um, even if we want to be invest, in, investors in the long run in this particular company. Number two, we also want to be aware of share buybacks. Uh, so just to give a bit of understanding on what this is, this is whereby a company purchases its own shares. And uh, maybe we could also just put it down on the chat, uh, some ideas you would think why a company, let's say Power Monday, would want to buy back its own shares. Recently, we had Nation Media Group uh, buy back its own shares. And I'd want to, to understand from those of us who are here, why, why would a company want to buy back its own shares, having already given to shareholders some money? Um, then the third one is looking out for retained earnings. So this is the profit that we've said retains is retained in that black box. So once we are able to identify the profit after tax, um, this is the money that we are left with, the money that we have. Uh, at the end of the day, having cleared out all the expenses that come into the business, that's the amount that we'll be left with. And maybe going back to, to number two, uh, the reason why share buybacks happen is because a company wants to increase the value of the share price. And how this happens is by reducing the supply uh, that is currently in the market, just like how money works. When the government wants to reduce the money in circulation, it then goes back to the CBK. It's the same way that uh, the company would then do the same thing. They would buy back their own shares from the shareholders to reduce the supply and increase the value or the price of this particular stock, uh, making it more valuable. And for the remaining shareholders, we'll be getting bumper harvest in terms of dividends. Yeah. Now, I'd want us to go more into a practical illustration of how our money grows when we invest in the stock market and how we'll be able to go shopping and identify the ideal stocks for ourselves. As you can see on this graph, uh, it's an up and down market. There are days that there are very good days and there are days that are also very bad days. So again, it goes back to identifying a perfect strategy or in terms of uh, identifying a tactic that you will come into the market, seize the opportunities and be confident in the opportunities and the ideas that you came in with. All right, now let us proceed to go for stock shopping. This will be involving 
So let us, uh, let us, let us participate together. We have just entered Kafo, all of us, this fine morning, and we are going on a shopping spree. We are going on a shopping spree to find the best stocks that we can purchase for ourselves. So we will have five items that will be the criteria we choose uh, for our selection of stocks. And number one will be selecting a group of top quality stocks. So I just want us to kindly mention on the chat, uh, what stocks do you think come to your mind when you think of you want to buy shares um, and you think of big companies, good companies in Kenya? I really just want to, to, to get our feedback and our opinion on the chat. And I'll be looking just to pick up uh, a few that come. So, so feel free. I'm seeing KCB from Suzanne. Thank you, Suzanne. I'm seeing Absa and Safaricom as well. Just keep them coming. I'm seeing Equity Bank. I'm also seeing Safaricom. Teresia says banks as well. Okay. Safaricom really seems to be standing out today. KPLC. KPLC is also there. Mm -hmm. Let's keep them coming. I'm seeing Netflix. Okay. We've gone international. I'm seeing we've gone international with Netflix. We've gone international. Just keep them coming. NVIDIA is also international. These are international stocks. Kenjin by Dr. Mwangi. EABL by Teresia again. BAT by KJ. Okay, okay. All right, so we've been able to identify the stocks that uh, we feel are in our portfolio and uh, are very top quality stocks that we have here in Kenya. And that is the first step. Now, the second step is we also need to identify what is it that we can buy cheaply out of all of the stocks that we have mentioned above. So we have KPLC, we have NVIDIA, we have Netflix, we have Kenjen, EABL, BAT, Safaricom, KCB and Equity Bank among, among others. So we need to be able to identify what is it that we can be able to purchase cheaply as at Monday the 15th, 2023, because we all know as Kenyans we love a good bargain and it also feels good when you know you bought it at the best price uh, that is currently availed, availed to you. So I'm going to just put on the link, uh, I'm going to put on the chat a link that you'll be able to find these prizes. Let us all just take a minute to the one that you mentioned um, or to pick the price. I've shared the link, which is the NSC data service market statistics. Alternatively, for those who are also commuting to work, um, in about a, a minute, I will also move to that website whereby we'll just go through it together and look at the stocks that we mentioned. But if you could also open it uh, on your end, for better. Um, I believe you can all see my screen. Okay, so now this is how the data service of the Nairobi Securities Exchange looks like. And we are particularly interested in the equities statistics. So that is what we will be looking at today. Now, um, I saw a mention of banking the banking sector, and I want us to just note down. Um, Equity Bank was mentioned, so that is 35.8. That is the last traded price, 35.8. We also mentioned KCB, which is currently at 22 shillings. Um, I believe there was also NCBA at 37.8 shillings, and we also have Standard Chartered currently at 151 shillings. Lastly, cooperative bank, maybe we could add as well at 11.25 shillings. So that is the banking stocks. Um, I also saw Safaricom. Safaricom falls under telecommunication. And currently it is trading at 13.9 shillings. 13.9 shillings. Um, there was also Bamburi. Bamburi, Bamburi, which is under construction, then it was last traded at 35 shillings. 
So for this context, we will look at uh, particularly the ones that are in Kenya and, and maybe leave it as a reserve for us to look at the ones on a global scale um, at a private and personal level. But that is the link to be able to find the prizes for the Kenyan stocks. So we've been able to identify the two. And um, just to give a summary in statistics, this was a report as per Friday showing that uh, these were the top five companies, top five counters, the quality stocks that we have currently in the NEC. So we have Safaricom being number one. We have Bamburi being number two. We have Equity as number three, KCB as number four, and Cooperative Bank as number five compared to the last week where we had Standard Chartered uh, on the list. So now we can see that uh, out of all the ones we mentioned, we are already one step ahead at identifying very good and top quality counters. And now that we figured out the price, I want us to then go back to the third one, whereby we said we will pass through the filter as mentioned, identifying are they great investment opportunities? And that is what we highlighted as, do they pay dividends? Have they done any share buyback? And what are the retained earnings of this particular company? So just to mention um, and to make it easy for us to go forward with our shopping, all of the companies that are here and that are listed, they all pay dividends. So they have all passed to the second metric. Then the, the second one is then share buyback. Um, out of the five companies, none of them have done a share buyback recently. Um, and that is okay. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't happen. And the third one would then be looking for the retained earnings. And how we then look at the retained earnings is by going on to Google. Dr. Google will always give you remedies and just searching what is the profit after tax or retained earnings of Safaricom 2023 compared to 2022. And you will be able to get a figure or a percentage. Currently, we'll be working with percentages. Uh, as we go to finding the retained earnings, I want to just also pick on the chart out of the counters that we have seen the top five, which ones are we dropping? Which ones are we continuing with? So according to price, um, which was our first factor, which ones are we willing to proceed with and which ones are we not willing to proceed with? If we could just put on the chart as well uh, for me to see, are we going with standard chartered? as much as the price is at 161 or do we want to go with equity because the price is at 35.8 so let us just uh, let's just share and make it as practical as possible uh, for those who are in a position to do so let me go back to the steps yes i'm seeing uh, we are getting some time to to think maybe so I could just go over the prices again. Cooperative Bank was at 11.5. What did I say about the retained earnings? We are heading towards the retained earnings. We first want to do the qualification or picking the stocks from the price point. Then we go to the retained earnings. Yes. So number one was Cooperative Bank at 11.25%. Number two was Equity Bank at 35.8 uh, shillings rather. KCB is 22 shillings, Bamburi is 35 shillings, and Safaricom is 13.9 shillings. The minimum amount to be able to purchase a share, depending on the price, is now what dictates. Uh, for instance, Operative Bank is 11.25. With that 11.25, you're able to purchase one share. So you'd be able to do 200 shares, 100 shares, 300 shares, so the price, the, the, the shares that have lower prices means we are able to get more value and more quantity. And that is what we want. That is exactly what we want. So I'm seeing here we have equity from Zach. Zach is saying uh, equity. So we have equity that we have in our shopping basket. Okay, Safaricom by Nancy. All right, all right. Let us proceed with our, our shopping spree this Monday. Equity, Safaricom. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's 100 units. Equity Safaricom. 
back to Safaricom. Safaricom is a favorite, I see. So Safaricom is a favorite uh, for, for most of us. Cooperative Bank by Joshua. Okay, that's a good idea as well, just to have a bit of diversity. Equity slash KCB. I like the slash. Why not both? Why not both? Why not both? Why not both? All right. Okay. So we've been able to pick those stocks and put them in our basket. We now have Safaricom. We have Copbank. We have Equity, KCB. And uh, any I've missed? No. Safaricom. Okay. Those are the ones that uh, that we are carrying in our basket this morning. Now, next would be filtering through now the next in terms of retained earnings. And that we said is just going to Google and searching what is the retained earnings of profit after tax for the particular companies that you want to look for. Um, so what I will just do, I will give us the retained earnings percentage wise so that we are able to make a decision from there. Number one was a uh, cooperative bank and uh, Cop Bank, Cop Bank retained earnings. Top bank retained earnings was uh, 7.6 percent it had increased 7.6 percent from the last year so if it's an increase i will write up if it if it's a decrease i will write down so that is cooperative bank the next one i have seen we are looking at is equity 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 is up 45 percent in terms of retained earnings and then we will go to safaricom Safaricom, Safaricom, which is down 13.9%. It's down 13.9%. And then I believe we also had KCB in our baskets. KCB, KCB, which is also down 22%. KCB is also down 22%. Having seen the retained earnings and wondering, um, cooperative bank, equity, KCB, these are all in the same sector. And you're all seeing that all of them, uh, apart from KCB, went up. So a question we would want to ask ourselves is, what is the reason for this particular extreme rises and also the decline? So it would also be important to look at business daily, also just such recent information on news on the respective companies that you want to be looking at. Cooperative Bank, for instance, is going up 7.6, equity 45%. Um, and how this works in the banking industry or in that particular sector, once the interest rates are escalating, um, banks tend to make more money because we have all received in one way or another uh, the increase in interest rates, mortgages, the interest rates are increasing, loans, if you have any loans, the loans, they're increasing the interest rate and they get to collect more money given the economic downturn, yeah? Safaricom, on the other hand, are down 13.9%. The reason for this, maybe you could say the expansion into Ethiopia that has taken quite a bit of time to stabilize, meaning that the profits that they are also receiving here in Kenya are being transferable. They are being transferred um, to, to setting up Ethiopia. And then we would then consider, is it an investment we think in the long term would pan out and would make sense for us to buy at this point in time when the share is still low. KCB is also down 22%. Um, and again, this could be attributed to the recent acquisition of National Bank. Uh, we know that they are currently in a merger um, and, and that has also contributed in terms of distributing their profit. So we've been able to identify Cop Bank, Equity, Safaricom, and KCB. So again, I will just ask us, who do you think has survived and is still on our basket. So who are we looking at the basket? Uh, adding our own judgment. I want it to be as personal as possible. Look at your budget. Look at uh, differentiate. Before you go to the till, you always know, is it a need? Is it a want? Do I need it? Do I not need it? Okay. Uh, Connie is saying she's a bit lost when we get to the retained earnings amount. So how I've derived these particular percentages has been the profit before tax and the profit after tax. So the percentage wise is calculating the profit before tax minus the profit after tax divided by the profit after tax. So let's say the profit we had was uh, 100 shillings. And then the profit after tax, when we, when we remove 30% off of 
the profit that we made, we are left with 70 shillings. So that is 100 minus 70. We are left with 30 shillings. Uh, 100 minus 30, we are left with 70 shillings. Out of these 70 shillings, we divide it again by the amount that we are left with after, which is 70%, which is 70 shillings. So that's 100 shillings minus the 30 over the 30. That is the percentage that we are then following up here with. Yeah. So that's how you calculate the retained earnings. But I believe Dr. Google eh, shall also give you more guidance on the same. Now that we are we are together on that, you're welcome, Connie. Um, we want to see who has survived in our basket. Who do we think will give us the greatest return on our investment? So again, let's just go to the chart given the metrics that we have and highlight. Do we want to proceed with equity to the counter? Do we want to proceed with Safaricom to the counter? And there's no wrong answer or right answer here. It is very much based on judgment and uh, your preference for these particular shares. Are we proceeding with KCB to the counter? Or are we going with Copbank to the counter? I'm seeing Nancy is taking Safaricom to the counter. I'm seeing Melvin is taking Cooperative Bank because he's thinking long term. I like that. I like that movie. All right. John is going with Cop Bank. Paul is going with Equity. Connie is going with Equity. Sam is going with KCB. I'm very glad we are shopping together today. Uh, everyone looks like a happy buyer. Jackie is going with Cop Bank and also KCB again from Paul. Great. Great, 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 great. So that is, in the short, in the long, how we are able to identify in a very simple manner to be able to pick our stocks. And I'm seeing Safaricom as well has been selected, I believe. Um, again, is a very personal choice and based on how long we want to be able to have these investments. Taking in mind that short term ranges from one year to about uh, less than one year. So that is short term. Mid-term was there, would then be us holding between one year to five years. And five years in, and beyond is something that we then consider long-term. So also identifying, I'm picking this commodity, I'm picking COP, I'm picking KCB, I'm picking Safaricom. How long do I want this particular item to serve me? And how long do I want to have it before we part ways? So that is another important thing for us to focus on. This we've gone through and we've been able to identify that uh, there are those who are living with Safaricom, there are those of us who are living with Equity, there are those of us living with KCB and Cop Bank. So that has been good to see. And I think with that, I will call it a wrap to, to my presentation on analyzing and picking the best stocks possible. And before maybe I, I open the floor to voice questions, I would just want to leave us with a quote that says, a portfolio, building your portfolio is like a bar of soap. The more you handle it, the smaller it gets. The more you handle it, you handle it, you handle it, you realize, okay, that might have not been the best decision on my end. I will pick another one. I will make another decision. And the smaller you have, the more you're able to give your best attention towards the portfolio that you will be growing. Great. Over to you, Paul, to be able to moderate your you. Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stacy. Yes, I believe uh, that's uh, uh, simple and straightforward enough, but I know we'll have a good number of questions. We'll start with Dr. Eda. Thank you very much for that excellent presentation. I have a friend who um, invested in shares in Safaricom. And uh, I think in 2021, and she went to get her money recently, and it was a disaster because she had lost her money. And uh, somebody had told her they, she should have been warned about the depreciating shilling. And then uh, you have all these reports about how the Kenya government is now uh, borrowed 1.6 trillion and they're still borrowing and they're still spending like crazy. 
and uh, they're not able to pay back. And right now, we are using 78% of our income uh, to pay debt in Kenya. And so we're just on a downhill trajectory. And uh, other countries that co collapsed, have collapsed. For example, Ghana was using seven, was on 70% of its income to pay debt, you know. Sri Lanka collapsed at 80%. So um, how honest are we being when we say that uh, we're not on a downhill trajectory and what is the real picture? Because I don't know, I really don't know. Okay, um, I could also pick another question maybe. Uh, so that I answer too, at a time. There is the question in the chat that has just come, uh, which is, uh, is it possible for someone to open a CDC uh, account as an individual and trade in stocks without going through the agent broker. Uh, yes, that's uh, the. Uh, I will pick those two. Now, um, just to start with Edda asking about the the state of our country and uh, our seventy eight percent repayment on debt with the particular earnings that we make. That we are very much aware of in terms of the euro bond is coming up soon and uh, the repayment is done in June. And we can see that the reason for the interest rates increasing is because the government is trying to collect more money to be able to make this repayment. Another factor that maybe has not been mentioned about is um, the railway line that we recently constructed, SGR. The repayments are also done in January and June. So you can see, um, as a country, we are at a point of financial this distress because uh, a lot is expected of us and we need to pay our loans um, in the new time or figure out are we going to take more loans to be able to pay this particular loan. With regard to the depreciation of the currency, um, that is something that is in the control of the monetary policy committee. But then again, if, given that we operate in a very open market, meaning demand and supply of our currency is what dictates the price. That is the only way we are able to identify the movements and not particularly that it is constrained to a particular point or a particular price whereby we cannot say we are not going to 160, 170 or not. And also investing in shares, um, having mentioned the factor about um, depreciation and depreciation because of the currency, I would not say that that was the reason why your friend ended up um, realizing losses in the stock market or particularly in Safaricom. But what it had to do primarily is that she bought the share at a higher price. And once she wanted to go for her money, at that point in time, as we saw from the graphs, the market was at a downturn. And you don't get to realize this particular loss until you sell your share. So at even gain, any given point in time, it is just a number on the screen whereby we say we are down 7.8%, we are down 8%, we bought at 30, now it is at 15 that looks like a 50% loss. But until you sell the share, you have not realized the loss. So then that then comes back to the question that we put in. How long do we want to then be investing in the share market, in the stocks market? How long do we want to then be putting our money in compared to the period we want to be getting our money out? Because if you're looking for short term, I would also not recommend shares as that particular route, particularly in the given point in time. That is why it would be important to look into global market options. It would also be important to look into ETFs or even the indexes that we have currently in the NSC. And what the index is and the ETFs is a summation. All the shares, all the stocks that we have in the market on the top 25 ones, they are then put in a bundle and we buy this particular index, giving into consideration that we've been able to diversify in terms of industry, and we are also diversifying and hedging ourselves from such risks. Um, so that would be my answer to you. And for Susan, in terms of CBS account, is it a way that we can be able to open it personally? Yes, this is possible, uh, but the challenge then comes in, the CMA put it that we have to all go through brokers, even myself as a portfolio manager, managing your money, I still have to go through a broker to be able to acquire this particular assets. 
And the reason for this is just to make sure that we are having um, a very transparent system just to make sure that the price that you're being sold for the share is currently the price that the market is at. Otherwise, you would be told the share is at this price, very unregulated. Uh, everyone wants to sell at this particular point in time to make shares given the market is at different points in time. So it is a regulatory requirement for us to go through uh, particular brokers and intermediaries. Yes, so that, that was uh, Susan. And I believe Thank I have you. also touched on Melvin, who had asked about ETFs. So it is also a cumulative investment in an index, and it is a safer bet. Um, and also for the long term, continuously just growing with that, we also see your portfolio grow. Yes, there are additional questions. Thank you for that. The additional questions. One is from uh, uh, the Melvin, there was one from Melvin that says, oh, there is one, are there reliable agents that assist Kenyans to buy diaspora stocks? That is from Teres, mm -hmm. Teresia. Uh, okay. That is uh, to assist in buying diaspora stocks like Apple, Netflix, ETC. And then there is also that one from Melvin, can shares be bought for a miner? Okay. And, okay. and then there is the question from Huawei Media, this could be Udiambolale. Uh, a uh, case of site on shares we invested and now matter went to court and it's under receivership as we wait in vain what are the warning signs for shareholders uh to divest, divest? Mm, like yes. okay. i'll answer this yeah. first yes answer those um, ones okay perfect um so the first one is better receive reliable agents for us to be able to purchase from diaspora Currently, um, I know two in the three in the market. There's one known as uh, Ingot. I'll just put it on the chat. Uh, there's one known as Ingot. There's one known as Ingot, and uh, they are a broker for currencies and also uh, enables Kenyans to be able to purchase uh, the Apple and the Netflix and the like. We also have EGM. EGM are also a global broker as well that are present here and Pepperstone. Um, I'm very aware that HISA also has a pl platform whereby individuals would be able to go and purchase um, the stocks on an individual level, um, but I'm yet to try out that one. It's something maybe that you could also experiment and see. So there is uh, HISA, EGM, uh, Pepperstone, and Ingots. Yeah. Then uh, the next question is from Melvin, I believe. Yeah, and he asks, can shares be bought for a minor? Yes, it can be bought for a minor. However, um, the CDS account would need to be under a particular guardian, um, showing that this particular guardian is the custodian for this account, and the account and the shares are then written under the name of this particular minor, uh, but it's a very it's very possible for this to happen. There just needs to be a guardian who is involved. The next is uh, the case of site on shares and being able to understand when do we start seeing the red flags? When do we leave the camp? When do we uh, jump off the ship? I think the most important thing, again, uh, as I have mentioned, is looking at the financial statements and being able to identify, okay, um, from last year's dividend, have they told us that they are reducing the dividends and what is the reason that we've been given for them to reduce the dividends? Number two, the retained earnings. They are saying that they are currently making a loss uh, or they have made a loss consecutively for two years or also the investment reports are usually given half yearly. So you can look at the half year compared to, um, let's say January, 2023 and January, 2022. How many half yearly reports do we have? We have two. How many quarterly reports do we have? We have four. So is it a trend that we are going down? And what is the reason for this? Um, or is it an upward trend? And if it's a downward trend and you're also, as an investor, not feeling comfortable with the reasons you're being given in terms of investments are being channeled into another project, are you looking at the projects? When you pass by one of the projects, because I turn on the real estate, this is a construction they're saying that they are channeling their money into, but you're not seeing the movement. You're not seeing the bricks by bricks by bricks coming up. 
So then that is a question to you as an investor to be able to identify it is your point to divest. And then I saw another question here as well um, from Melvin. Um, there is a question from uh, Joshua. How okay. does Amana help us grow our wealth? Are there products we can prioritize, patronize? I don't know what patronize yes. means. Then number two is from mm -hmm. Connie. Are there any hidden costs or hidden mm -hmm. costs, I believe? Hidden costs associated yes. with uh, shares? With shares. Okay. Yes. And then uh, 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 Eunice Olao has said, please enlighten me on Standard Investment Bank. And then... Yes, I uh, did. All right. Yes. I then I have a question. Fast. Then I have a question which I've put there. Uh, there is this philosophy that you buy when it's low and sell when it's up. How do you know that this, this low could be leading yeah. towards extinction? Now yeah. another thing is how do you how do you know when to sell or are you supposed to sell if at all? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, now, so for the first question from Melvin, let me pick it, which is. Um, I talk about the foreign capital flight that you're currently experiencing with the bonds and securities market. This is true because primarily our securities market is really foreign dominated. Um, and you would realize the movements that happen in a day, 60, 70% is primarily foreigners who are selling and buying stocks actively. I would mention that uh, this is maybe not a tactic that we could incorporate um, as retail investors because it takes a lot of capital to be, and it's also very costly to actively manage your portfolio. Every day if you're selling, buying, selling, buying, I, it also links to the question that uh, I've been asked in terms of the hidden costs. There are no particular hidden costs, but the costs that then come is you have commissions from the broker that usually range between um, 0.05% to 0.10. And then you also have withholding tax, which is 15% um, of the particular amount of interest in terms of profit, or even if you made a loss, you still have to pay the withholding tax. So given these particular commissions that come in and the levies that come in as well, leading to about 0.98%, if you were to buy and sell actively, then you're eating into the daily profit that you would be making. Um, so then again, it goes back to us assessing, do you want to have this stock for a longer period of time? Is it something that you're looking for for a shorter period of time and why so? Then picking the next one, um, Joshua, how does Amana help us grow our wealth and the products that we have here at Amana Capital? So Amana Capital is a fund manager, and what a fund manager is, is you've understood that it is important for you to invest. You've understood that this is something you want to grow your money, grow your portfolio, yet your line of expertise or um, your interest in terms of following to learn this particular product is very limited, but you want to see the money grow. So you then bring the money to us and you tell us, um, my name is Paul. And this is my particular age. This is the risk I'm looking for. With this money, I want to grow it to educate my children. With this money, I want to be able to further my education. With this money, I want to be able to find out how I can retire. Then we sit down together and we structure. Um, given your current income, given uh, your current expected inflows, how can we be able to channel that for you and grow that for you? So we would then advise you. Um, whether bonds is the best and ideal way for you. If you're in retirement and you're looking for an income, we'd advise you to go with bonds so that we give you some sort of income. Is it shares that we'd also invest uh, for you for in? Uh, and currently we just launched a new product, which is the global markets, whereby we are doing forex exchange for our, our clients. And this is actively trading in the forex market, whereby we buy currencies and we sell currencies knowing that uh, Eda had even raised this, the currency that we currently have, the Kenya shilling, is depreciating. So how are we able to invest for our clients in USD and get for them USD returns? So that is something we are also doing. And there's also lastly a product for fixed deposit, um, similarly in USD, whereby we have partners abroad and uh, we get to invest your money in USD, in particular banks, different banks. Um, then we give you a percentage. Currently, it is at 13.5%. Uh, that is what we are offering. And as the rates are continuing to go up and up and up and up, 
which we have identified will be the case this year, given the repayments we have to make, then our clients continue to make more money and also not lose out on the bumper harvest that we just mentioned. Yeah. Enlighten us on SIB. Um, so SIB is a money manager. And the difference between a fund manager and a money manager is that a fund manager has an array of products that we offer. And it is in terms of holding your portfolio and tailoring solutions for you. Whereas a money manager, you then take your money and they invest in the different products. Yes, our money is regulated by CMA, um, which was actually the second company fund manager to be regulated. And uh, we've been around since 2003. So we are very much present and legit in the industry. Yeah. Um, so SIB are money managers and uh, they then take the money and investment, invest in different products and provide their clients with returns. With regards to the workings inside the company, I might not be able to advise on that since um, I, I do not appertain work with them. Yes, so again, to the philosophy Paul had mentioned on uh, when do we know when to buy, when do we know when to sell? And how long should we be able to to know before this is going into um, extinction? So the number one, I will take us back to the steps that we have covered. The number one item was we have to pick great companies. We have to pick companies that have been around minimum for 20 years. We have to pick companies that uh, have shown a track record of giving their shareholders dividend. They've shown a track record of retaining some earnings. So once we've established that and we've established that they have very deep roots in our economy and that they're not going anywhere, then we proceed to continue with the other aspects of the evaluation that we mentioned. Then in terms of value of stocks, this is by Melvin again in the agricultural sector. Um, it remains very high, discuss this. Um, so I like this question again from Melvin because uh, I had actually done a research in terms of incorporating agricultural sector products into the NEC. And uh, currently, I was suggesting that it could be done in the derivatives market. So the derivatives market is whereby you are unsure of the outcome of rains and so many other factors as a farmer. You are unsure whether the sisal will uh, be able to, to do well with the current climate change. And you want an assurance in terms of getting your in. It's an assurance or a sort of insurance of the amount that you would have got is still the amount you would get. And paired with then a buyer who would then be Melvin in this case, he also wants to get some SISO, so they're in an agreement with a particular farmer. Um, and this could also be extended into coffee, into tea, and any other agricultural products. But currently, it's not available in the stock market. Uh, that's the research that I did. And hopefully with time, it's something that could be incorporated for us to also discuss. Um, then Teresia again says 13.5 interest on USD fund. Yes, it is net. It is net of withholding tax and commission fees. Um, Melvin again, how Amana and SAB offer interest rates and returns, um, which one cannot get in the US, for example. So again, I will go back to mentioning the difference between the two companies. Amana is a fund manager, SAB is a money manager. And uh, for us, we deal directly with the, the clients and we do the direct investments ourselves. Um, and that is how we are able to manage the portfolio and grow a particular return. Again, when it comes to investments, we cannot guarantee you. We say, Melvin, you will be getting 20% for 20 years. Uh, having invested in Amana, given we have seen how the markets operate, but we will be able to advise you, this is the range that you are currently looking at. This is how it's going higher. This is how it's going lower. And these are other alternatives we can look at. That's why it is also very important to diversify our portfolios. Yes. I'm thank you. I'm thank, thank you, Stacey. I think uh, we are two minutes out of time. So all the other questions, kindly also put your uh, contacts in the chat so that people can reach out to you. And... Uh, uh, at this point, uh, I had you also mention Forex. Actually, the next two sessions we are supposed to have will be, the next one is about health and wellness, and then the last one for this month should be about Forex. We wanted to understand how Forex works. So maybe we'll touch base again and see if Please that will work with your program. Otherwise, I will call upon 
Lady Noel, are you able to pass a vote of thanks? Kindly try. I will also make sure I put my email on the chat. Feel free to contact me uh, through that and let us also connect on LinkedIn. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Stacy. My name is Noel uh, Hassandi. I'm a member of Power Monday. And I'll just start by a quote as you were explaining to um, Dr. Edda. There's a quote I read by Warren Buffet. He says that stock exchange is buying, like taking money from the, from the impatient and the money is is being bought by the patient. So you have to be very patient when it comes to stock exchange. I would love to thank you for uh, honoring our invitation. I know it was such a short notice, but we thank you for gracing for Monday today. I would love to thank the um, organizers of Power Monday. You do this every day, every Monday. I'd really like to thank um, you guys for that. I would also love to thank everyone who participated today everyone who logged in i know it's very early and it's a monday morning we do not take it for granted that you guys just log in every monday the same time to come for power monday so i thank you guys for that and i'm pretty sure i will see you next time again thank you so much karibu nisana uh, thank you for Beautiful. that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very I much. Uh, great, great. Dr. Uh, Dr. Melvin, would you like to put a comment? Uh, this is your field. Dr. Melvin is a, a money person always reaching us investment and is part of Power Monday. Dr. Melvin, you can say something. I'm seeing like you have white beard. I've, I, I don't think I've seen this in recent times, but it's okay. <laughs> Thank you, um, OPP. What I'd like to say is that Stacy has given us uh, a very refreshing talk on investing in stocks and bonds. And she, uh, we couldn't have got a better uh, speaker this morning. I'm so glad to have been in this session. And uh, I, I can't express how grateful I am for such a detailed explanation of how to go about investing in stocks available to us. Thank you very much. And I, I, I look forward to actually seeing her another time. And I, I've already connected with her on uh, LinkedIn. <laughs> and I'll probably be dropping a line to her. Back to you, OPP. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Melvin. Yeah. So, Stacy. Dr. Melvin is one of us, so is Antonia, so is uh, Noel, and there is also the person who did the introduction, our communication guy, uh, the Ambolale, who is a, a veteran journalist. Otherwise, uh, Power Monday is big, and for people who are here for the first time, we always have a we always we have a, a WhatsApp group which you can join. You just need to uh, log into the website liveyourdream.co.ke slash powermonday and fill in the form there. Otherwise, 